think the typical reaction for people is that that makes no sense. Why would you do that? Why would you purposely decide to run 50 miles? You know, I often find myself being pushed right to my limits. I think some of this suffering really helps to kind of clue me in and think clearly about the challenges that animals are facing in mountains. Understanding those challenges is really central to the research that we do. Running and my research have, in some very real ways, sort of melded together. One of the real interesting aspects of running is being able to push myself to my limits and to find out what those limits are. As a biologist, I think it's really silly when I hear people say, humans don't have any limits, we just gotta keep pushing ourselves and break through our limits. No, that's crazy. We do have very real limits, and they're tied to very real physiological processes. As a biologist, I'm getting this insight into exactly where those limits are, not just for mice, but for me as, as a runner. <laughs> What's it like to run with Nate? Embarrassing? Um... Yeah, embarrassing is the word I would use to describe it. Sorry. Get away from me. Sorry. Here's the great thing about running with Zach is that, you know, he's been my boss for a while, but, but when we're out running, I, I feel like I might sort of have the ability to make him hurt a little bit or be like, come on, Zach, just pick up the pace. <laughs> <laughs> Running, especially at kind of higher elevations in the mountains, just really kind of naturally make me think about how it is that animals that are living in these places, how they're able to do it. I'm generally interested in how animals live in harsh environments, and one of the most harsh environments are, are mountaintops. I think most people understand why they're hard places to live. There's not a lot of oxygen availability, they're cold, there's a lot of solar radiation, and oftentimes food is not quite as abundant as it is in the lowlands. And yet, there's a whole wide diversity of animals that live in these places. One of the animals that live in these places is the deer mouse. I mean, in a lot of ways, it's a typical mouse. It's unassuming, pretty cute, but it turns out that it's one of the greatest endurance athletes we know about. Deer mice are one of the few small mammal species that we find on the tops of the very tallest mountains in North America. And that's pretty incredible given that we also find them at the very lowest elevations in North America. Many mammals that live on mountaintops will ride out the winter by hibernating, so they'll, they'll sleep through the winter. Deer mice don't do that, so they're active all winter long. They're moving around on mountaintops buried by feet of ice and snow. So for a deer mouse, it's Boston Marathon is riding out the winter, trying to maintain a constant body temperature and move around and avoid predators. We try to understand how they meet these challenges physiologically. Their hearts and their lungs, have they changed compared to their low elevation ancestors? In what way? Are their muscles different? Do they work differently? Do the cells in their muscles work differently? And how does this affect their survival? At the end of the day, the sort of uh, tests that we're running on these mice are really the same ones that you would run on an Olympic athlete to try to understand how it is that an Olympic athlete does what they do. We have hyperbaric chambers so we can acclimate lowlanders to a simulated mountaintop and ask, can we train them to perform in the ways that the high altitude mice do? And, and they can't. We'll expose them to extreme cold and then we're also able to manipulate oxygen. And so that allows us to simulate a mountaintop. We can measure a Highlander's ability to generate heat and maintain its body temperature. And then we can compare that to a mouse living at low elevation. We can measure their breathing patterns and measure the amount of oxygen that's in their blood. Putting all that together, folks in my lab and then also our collaborators at other universities have been able to really pinpoint the specific physiological changes that seem to be most important for this elevated performance that the Highlanders have. The Highlanders have a 
greater proportion of what a lot of people call slow twitch muscle fibers. These are the muscle fibers that are important for endurance exercise. They also have a lot more capillaries in those muscles, and that just helps to supply oxygen and metabolic fuels to these muscles. Those changes to the muscle composition closely mirror the kinds of things that we see in elite human endurance athletes. For the most part, these changes in humans are happening within their lifetimes and are caused by training. The difference with deer mice is that primarily these differences are caused by generations of natural selection. You need to be an extreme athlete in order to survive these high elevation environments. And high elevation mice have another really key physiological adaptation to allow them to deal with low oxygen availability at high elevations. High elevation mice have a special kind of hemoglobin that binds oxygen more strongly. Hemoglobin is the protein that binds oxygen and then transports it through the blood. And that's a very different kind of hemoglobin than what we as humans have. No matter how many miles we run, we're never gonna have that same kind of hemoglobin. Natural selection has led to a complete remodeling of their cardiorespiratory physiology. So they breathe differently than lowlanders. Their hearts are larger and pump more blood. Their blood binds oxygen differently. The cells in their muscles use oxygen and metabolic fuels differently than lowlanders. All of these changes have come together to produce the endurance athlete that we see. Being a runner who's tried running at high elevations, it has given me immense respect for the mice we study. Because when you go up to those places, it's painful. But it's taken thousands, if not millions of years for them to actually become adapted to these environments. And so that also makes me feel a little bit better about myself because it's like, okay, they didn't do it in just one day. <laughs>